everybody, welcome back to Pagan's Witchy Corner. My name is Pagan, and today I am joined by a really awesome author that I am super excited to chat with, who is new to me, but I'm excited because I got to read one of her books lately, which was such a great book, and that is Stephanie Rosebird. Stephanie, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm doing great. It's a beautiful day here in Chicagoland. Oh, that's wonderful. I'm so glad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, your latest book is The Healing Power of African-American Sp Spirituality, and it is a reprint of a previously published book, which I don't actually have the other title in front of me, but I can attest to everyone who is listening, this book was such a great read. It was so informative and wonderful and taught me a lot of stuff that I had no idea that had connections to the African spirituality, which was such a great thing, and I'm so excited that we get to talk all about this book. So oh, <laughs> the, the book was such a great and informative tool. And um, my favorite part of the book that I have to say was probably the fact that I had no idea that African spirituality was so tied with uh, Egyptian spirituality. I yes. had no idea. Yeah. I mean, because Egypt is North Africa. Right. And <laughs> many of us have um, our uh, tribal affiliation affiliations including my own are out of Egypt so oh that's really interesting like and, and you know because a lot of times when you read about um the African spirituality and all of its different variations which we can talk a little bit about those but um it seems that the Egyptian aspect of it is very separated in a lot of times. And yeah. I'm sure that has to do with colonialism and all sorts of other stuff that, you know, it's just terrible. But I think mm -hmm. it's really interesting how they were tied together and how there was so much um, information and lore that is almost uh, here in the South. It's almost common practice. And yes. I'm like, wow, I had no idea that any of that was associated. So, oh, it was such a good book. Yeah, thank you so much. It's very um, exciting always to do that research and um, discover, find new discoveries um, for myself. Some things really surprised me. So um, I hope that that kind of excitement comes through in the pages. It does. It very much does. I will admit that it is one of those things that this is not in my wheelhouse. And anybody who listens to the show knows that African spirituality is not in my wheelhouse. I am predominantly Celtic and Norse of a practitioner, so this is not my normal wheelhouse, but it's really fascinating to me because I like to learn about all the different pantheons and cultures and everything else mm -hmm. because all of it can, it's fun to see when all of it starts to overlap because, you know, world religion happens to be a thing that overlaps a lot, especially with um, the histories and everything with the unfortunate history of how American um, African spirituality ended up in America, which is the slave trade that nobody likes to really talk about, but it is important to talk about it, to know how it got here and to see how it changed, which you did a beautiful job in the book talking about that, which it's so sad though to, to, to read because it's like, it, I hate that it had to be that way to how it got here, but yeah. at the same time, I'm really thankful that it has such a resurgence here in the U S and yes allows it to you know now be freely practiced yes absolutely i agree with you 100 percent and um you know i i believe and i have written about this since my first book stick stones roots and bones that um as neighbors to one another um in the americas our different practices have definitely rubbed off on one another just mm -hmm. like our food and language and um even like slang and idioms, it's all, um, you know, it's not separate. It's definitely um, definite connections there that are very strong. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, kind of going into this book, I expected, you know, because I didn't know about the book, I, I had gotten a copy from uh, Wiser and Wiser's like, hey, you might like this book, check it out, see what you think. And yeah. when I started to read it, I was like, this book has so much stuff that I already know, but it's common knowledge here. It's not practiced as a part of paganism and all that. And that's mostly the healing aspects when you're, especially there was so much stuff in the healing aspect part of the book that I'm just like, wow, this is mm -hmm. like common knowledge here. Yes. And it's just old folklore. Yes. But at the same time, it's like, I hadn't, 
I I also really hate the fact that it's just folklore. We just know it. And it's like, yeah. but it has roots that need to be established and known. And that I'm so glad you wrote about it because now I can go like, that's where that comes from. That's not yeah. just an old wives tale kind of thing. Absolutely. <laughs> And you know, I mean, hoodoo is a collection of folkloric practices. So mm -hmm. we hoodoo practitioners are very proud to be folklorists and um, to be involved in the tales of the folks. So um, it makes us really happy to be um, doing something like that and keeping those old stories and traditions in practice. I do love like, that. Um, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. So one of my favorite things that I would really like to talk about here is um, obviously when it comes to hoodoo and voodoo and all of those other African spirituality practices, when it comes to practices that are within a culture, we always want to talk about cultural appropriation, especially for anybody who's new to the show who may just be starting out on their path. Can you kind of elaborate on some of those things so that way people know where the line is and where they shouldn't cross. Yes. Um, okay. So when I wrote Sticks, Stones, Roots, and Bones, as I said, um, I had um, a different viewpoint um, than I am currently connecting into through um, my Black community. Mm -hmm. So originally I said, hoodoo is for everyone and, you know, everyone may practice and um, over the years, that was like 20 something years ago. And over the years, sisters and brothers have been like, no, these are our practices. We want them to be closed practices and um, other people can appreciate them. And there are certain peripheries of the uh, medicine that is, um, you know, useful for everyone, like, say, Florida water, mm -hmm. horseshoes, um, things like that. But um, we have come together and decided that um, hoodoo is uh, pretty much ours. Um, mm -hmm. Now, there are, there are um, exceptions. For example, in Appalachia, they have their own um, types of hoodoo practices there. Right. And, um, they are very intriguing to me, and I would not go around trying to um, say, oh, I'm an Appalachian um, hoodoo practitioner. So I really try to stick to um, my wheelhouse and my region that I come from and my family history, things like that. So, um, you know, there was a book that recently came out and oh my gosh, it has, it has a hard, long title, but um, Corey Hutch Hutchinson, made this anthology of regional um, folkloric practices. So mm -hmm. which there are many different in it, it shows the many different types of hoodoo um, practitioners. Let me just see if I, oh, here it is. It's on my bookshelf right here. Um, so it's called The Complete Book of North American Folk Magic. I have that book. <laughs> I haven't read it yet, but I do have that book. <laughs> I actually have two oh. copies of it, so I, I'm excited okay. to dig into it. Yeah, I have a chapter in here, and I talk about the origins of hoodoo for me and um, where it comes from and in my life and how it is practiced. So it's very, um, I wrote quite an autobiographical piece in here. Um, I think I called it something like hoodoo for a solitary practitioner. Mm -hmm. um, let me see what it's called. We can keep chatting. I'm I'm glad that um, it was right at my fingertips because <laughs> I didn't know that that would be so. Um, yeah. So the the uh, um that book that we're talking about, I will make sure the the link is in the show description so you all can check that out as well. That mm -hmm. actually is a just a recent release too. I want to say within the last like two to three months. Yes. If I remember correctly. Yes. Yeah. So the section that I'm in is New Holland, which is, you know, the old original name for um, New York mm -hmm. and another um, name here that I cannot pronounce, but uh, <laughs> mine is um, A Solitary Nature, My Hoodoo okay. Story by Stephanie Roseberg. And it is, um, I guess, about 10 pages long. And um, 
I enjoy doing that. It's a really interesting book and it does have so much diversity that talks about all yeah. the different folklore within America, which, yes. you know, America, we, we kind of like to say that we're at the melting pot and we kind of like to look at all the other world religions instead of looking at what we have here a lot mm. of times. So I think that this book is going to be a really fascinating book for everybody to have yes. on their shelves going forward because... You know, I think that America is now finally old enough that we can say, yeah, we got some culture. We, we got some folklore and some understanding. And, Absolutely. you know, it, yeah, we're a, mel well, we're a melting pot, but it's OK. So yeah, I love talking into that. And, you know, actually, my newest book is that um, was released June 1st is called African-American Magic, simply African-American Magic. And it, too, is a um, reboot. Of, it's a reboot of my second book, which was Four Seasons of Mojo. Okay. So, um, I think that, like, particularly when those first two books came along, there was, I guess there's always been controversy around the question that you're asking about the exclusivity or the closed practice and appropriation and um, it was a big topic when they came out and um, because they were kind of attacked by a white practitioner um, as not being authentic, if you can believe that. <laughs> um, but um, wow, we've come a long way since then. And I, I just think I love to present in front of diverse audiences. For mm -hmm. example, I am going to Mystic South um, in Atlanta, Georgia in mid-July. And I will be presenting out of our traditions things that are more generalized and open, like about metallurgy and um, things like that and how to open the portal because it's very important to us, like opening the doors to mm -hmm. magical realm. So things that I feel are useful and uh, are not um, hush hush. Uh, I will present on and, and share, and I share them in my books as well. So I think that's going to be fun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, that does pretty much answer my question. So mm -hmm. I, I think to kind of give everybody a little recap here, um, basically what you are saying is that Hoodoo was once considered open, but now it is more sacred to the African cultures. And yeah. now it is more of a closed practice, whereas Appalachian hoodoo, or you could almost call it Southern hoodoo at that point, too, because it stretches so far throughout the Southeast. Yes. Um, that is more open because it is its own brand versus traditional. Does that make, does it does kind yeah, of wrap it up in a nutshell? <laughs> yeah, like it's its own path and it yeah. is definitely um, Southeast and um, of a particular people. And you know what? I cannot really speak for them because I don't know. I have really good friends from Appalachia and I have done a lot of um, work there, um, but I don't know their feelings. So I'm not going to go ahead and speak for them. But what I'm trying to say is if you were a European um, descended American, that seems like a um, safer practice for you. Um, seems like because mm -hmm. I am not um, going to try to authoritatively speak for it. But that's why I pointed to the North American folk magic book because there's so much like of the ins and outs and really mm -hmm. um, particulars of the different practices and who's practicing them and why and um, who can practice them. So. I think that's a really great way to put that too. And it is kind of hard to figure out where the line is a lot of times, especially in the modern culture where it's like, well, we're a modern society. We should share everything. Yes. But at the yeah. same time, you know, if you're sharing everything, sometimes the traditions of who it's sacred to can fall through the cracks. And yes. then it doesn't it, it's almost kind of like um, taking something that's homemade and then mass producing it commercially. And it no longer is special because it's not handmade anymore. It's made in, you know, a factory and it's done, that kind of thing. So yeah. I think if we, you know, try to move far away from the sacredness to individuals, then it kind of 
it waters it down and doesn't make it as as good as it once was yeah it's pertinent and yeah you know there's a really famous um history as there is also in witchcraft and mm -hmm. i am a good witch and i'm very sensitive to the salem um witch trials and the burnings and and that kind of thing um very very deeply <laughs> upsets me almost every day. Um, but with our um, African American spirituality, it was outlawed. It was outlawed, like people would go into the woods and try to have things like um, something called a ring shout, where you draw up the spirit from from the earth, the spirit of the ancestors mm -hmm. through um, a dance and um, chanting and clapping and stomping. And um, it was outlawed. So um, for us, like we want some sense of um, ownership now, like mm -hmm. with Udu, for example, um, I'm always getting the number mixed up, but thankfully they're not too far from one another. So it's either 98% or 99% of the original informants, they're called, um, of Udu were African-American. Mm -hmm. they were black people so that that tells you a lot about the origins of the tradition and um who the caretaker should be i think that's really interesting and fascinating and you know like i said this is not a practice that's normally in my wheelhouse but i do love yeah. learning about it and i think that yes. it's a really fascinating thing and i think anybody who is like oh i i want to know more about it absolutely do all your research and make sure yeah. that whatever you're practicing is appropriate for you to practice never yes. you know try to appropriate somebody else's religion that is not in your you know uh i guess ethnicity that's the word i was trying to look oh, for no, so no, if, if you're no. not somebody that should be practicing it please don't go and practice it because that's very disrespectful but if you are trying to find the version of that that is safe obviously yeah. look into the appalachian oh, side of it yeah um, so your book had so many really awesome stories about healing and modern kind of fun practices that we would do normally, which I thought was super cool that were all associated with food and plant medicine. And I was just, I, I'm obsessed with that kind of stuff. I love all learning more and more about it. And I thought that that was so cool. And I was like, wow, this is really interesting. And the funny thing about learning about all that is, you know, as somebody who practices a little bit of green witchcraft, yes, it tied so deeply into all of that. And it was just so fascinating. It's like, there's so much history and there's so much medicine and there's also so much healing. And it, uh, it was such a great section of the book. Like, oh, I was just like completely like fangirling during that whole section. I'm oh. like, oh my gosh, I didn't know this was in here. This is fun. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. I mean, I am definitely a, I've always enjoyed different cultures so much. And in fact, I, some people consider me an anthropologist. I've written an anthropology textbook that's used. Oh, in that's college. neat. Mm -hmm. So that's all about um, the different um, admixture groups in the United States and beyond who have kind of isolated themselves and almost, they are, well, not almost, they are their own unique culture like the lumbi people who mm -hmm. um i also i have so many descending lines you know i'm actually writing a book on um ancestry dna right now for llewellyn but, oh that'll um, be fun yeah so when i say that i descend from lumbi people it's just it's one of like many many pieces of my puzzle of my hu humanity but they are a group of triracial people who um, have kind of like stayed in a few counties down south and um, yeah, set themselves aside. So that particular book is called Light Bright and Damn Near White. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great title. I hope, I really hope that Llewellyn keeps that title. So that'll be a very fun book to read. I'm excited for it. And I will, um, when do you think that book will be out? Do you have a potential air date for it yet? Yeah, so um, we're uh, mixing up two things. So Light Bright, Damn Near White is already, it's been out since oh, like okay. 2008 or 09. And um, 
that was put out by um, an academic press. Um, it's ABC Clio right now, and it was um, Greenwood at one point. It's um, been through a lot of different hands. But the one about admixtures, which is so interesting to this conversation, because it's like what it's about is it's called Spirits in My Bones, and it's a Llewellyn title. It will be out next year. And it's about like, so say, okay, I'll just use myself as an example. Mm -hmm. And today I was tightening up my research. I'm always like going back into my different websites that I have gotten um, DNA, and DNA ancestry readings from. Mm -hmm. um, and so today they're highlighting Scottish and Northern Ireland. And so when you are, um, you know, I am an Africanist. I am very um, in, in, involved deeply with African and African-American culture. So what does finding out that I am part Scottish and not a, not a small part, um, a decent chunk of me is that. So what does that mean? You know, I have uh, seen chat groups where, you know, chat groups are kind of out of favor now, but back in the day, um, people would say, oh gosh, you know, really derogatory things like, that's why I have such a big butt or something. <laughs> I'm finding um, Sub-Saharan African, but I, so the, the role of that book is to try to help people figure out how you can incorporate all that you are into your magical practices and into your altars and into your spells and and um, that kind of thing. So I don't know how I got to that top subject. <laughs> That's are. perfectly no. fine. But yeah. I am very fascinated with that. I think that book is going to be fantastic. And that book comes out, you said, next year with Llewellyn? Yes. Perfect. Okay. I will make sure that I have that on my to-be-read list for next year with Llewellyn um because they are awesome and i'm excited for that book i think that's going to be a really fascinating read i love learning about different you know cultures and all that cool stuff so i think that that's going to be a fun read for me yeah and who knows what's living inside of you you don't you don't know really until you do those tasks exactly exactly i think that's going to be so great so do you have it you said that you've got um mystic south that's coming up do you have any other classes workshops anything else on your schedule that everybody could look forward to um, so, yeah, Mystic South is going to be a blast. I'm doing three presentations there um, of different types. One is going to be more PowerPoint. One is going to be hands-on workshop. And the other one is going to be a mixture of reading, um, you know, reading from my work and doing a spell to oh, that'll be neat. Spell hands. Yeah. So, um, and then I... And in discussion about a, actually, I have accepted to be a featured speaker with the, I believe it's called the Space Foundation in Maryland. Um, please don't hang me if you hear me and I'm <laughs> wrong, but it will be, I do a lot of posting on my Instagram and on there I am S period, R period, bird. Um, so I'm on Instagram and when we get closer to that time, like probably in January of next year, I will start posting about that. And then I'm going to be potentially going abroad to one of our um, places where there are a lot of people of African descent. I hate to kind of name out things sometimes until... Like, I know, no, that they're going to have. That's okay. That's okay. It, it, it's... That, yeah, just to say, oh, God, I'm excited. There's a lot happening. I'm going to a lot of places, a lot more than I used to. Um, I am in discussion and thought about doing a hoodoo apprenticeship. A lot of different people have asked me if I offer that. And to this point, I have not. I'm feeling now ready for that. I do readings. So I'm doing a lot. I think that's going to be awesome. And, you know, obviously people can keep up with you on social media um, to find out what's happening and what you're going to yes. do and when and where and all that good stuff. So uh, everybody who's listening, I will make sure all of 
Stephanie's uh, social media links will be in the description. So make sure you give her a follow, check out her books. Yeah. Uh, I will include it. There's a lot of book titles. I believe that probably because some are being reprinted, the old ones may be out of print, but I will double right. check whatever is available. Yeah. If I can fit it all in, because I have a character limit, if I can fit them all in the show description, they will all be there. If not, do you have a website where people can find all I your do. stuff? Yes, it's www.stephanieroseberg.com. So just like super simple. Super simple. And yeah. that will also be included in the show link. So if I can't include all the book titles you can find them all on stephanie's website and obviously social media will have her appearances and where you can find yes. her and connect with her and if you read her books and i hope that you do please make sure you write a good review if you can yeah. especially if you like the book post a review everywhere and it doesn't have to be a different review for every site you can post the same one copy and paste i do it all the time uh yeah. but post those reviews it helps authors more than you could know and if you were somebody that is like, well, I can't really afford to buy any more books, check out your local library. If your library does not have a copy, request a copy. They will get it for you. Yes, definitely. Support your local libraries, everybody. So yes. Stephanie, this has been so much fun. I've had such a great time chatting with you and mm -hmm. I would love to do it again. So yeah. as soon as your new books come out, I hope that you will come back by the show and we can talk all about them. And okay. uh, everybody who's listening, y'all take care of yourselves, be safe, be good to each other. And I will see you all next time. Bye, everybody. Blessed be. Bye-bye. If you're a lover of Pig and Switchy Corner, then prepare for some really exciting news. I have started a new podcast, Pagan's Reading Nook. Don't worry. I'm still going to be creating all the Pagan Switchy Corner content that you all love. But as you all know, I have a huge passion and love of books, which has led me to create this new show. On Pagan's Reading Nook, I will be discussing the books that I'm reading, showcasing brand new titles, and sitting down with some amazing authors to talk about the worlds and the characters they've created. I will also be discussing new releases, fan favorites, and classic tales that have enchanted us throughout time. So, if you are a fan of this show, make sure you head over there and subscribe, and grab your favorite beverage, and join me as we dive into harrowing tales, seductive romances, and thrilling adventures in the fiction world. Mm -hmm.